when this problem becomes 3 sat solving a 3 sat problem is np complete however solving a 2 sat problem is not np complete this problem uses something very similar to that so if you can at least say to me the reduction into this problem i would be satisfied i would later tell how to solve this problem if you notice that there was a limit on the number of bills that the minister can vote which was at maximum of 4 so the minister could not vote on more than 4 bills and you had to satisfy more than half strictly more than half of his opinions which meant that if you see the number of bills on which we don't agree with him that could at maximum be one the number of bills which actually uh, we don't satisfy his opinion that could at maximum be one because if he voted on four bills more than half is three at least three three or four so we can only afford to not agree with one of his bills if it's three then more than half is 2 or 3 in this case as well we can only afford to not agree with one of his bills same is the case with 2 in fact in case of 2 you do have to agree with both of his bills and with 1 as well so we can only afford to uh, not agree with one of his bills right so you can first check for the ministers who have voted on sorry who have voted on two or one or two bills you will have to satisfy all of their opinions right so if the minister for those ministers you assign values to x i or x j so basically assume that for every bill i we have a variable named x i and x i can take value true or false So for these ministers you can directly assign xi a value if it was not assigned a value before. Suppose it was assigned a value before and the new value that, are, that you are assigning does not agree with the previous value then that means that this problem does not have a solution. So for these two cases, so basically now after dealing with these two cases I will be left with two cases when all the ministers would have voted on three or more than three bills. And for those bills, we can only afford not to agree with one of his bills, right? So notice that for these bills, if we value, if we take his opinion, if we take every pair of his opinion, the or of those opinions should be one, because we can only only one of them variable can, only one of those variables could be zero. So let's say if he says, let's say he votes on three bills, I, J and K, he says pass bill I, don't pass bill J and pass bill K. So if I take all three C2 pairs, since they have said no for J, we will take XJ complement. Notice this expression has to be true because only one of xi or xj complement or xk could be zero all the others have to be one do you agree is there anyone who does not agree do you understand this notation right xi denotes whether or not the bill i passes so if i say you don't have to pass, uh, pass uh, bill J then I am putting XJ complement here because if XJ passes that is if XJ is true then I am actually not valuing the minister's opinion so this is the notation this expression has to be true and this expression has to be true for all the ministers so we can take an and of all those expressions the problem reduces to 2 sat is the detection clear? Okay, uh, now the second part that we'll cover is that given a two-set expression, how to decide if or not uh, assignment of values is possible so that the two-set expression actually holds. So for that, we'll be using something called strongly connected components. 
which you already uh, studied in probably basic graphs. So now we are looking at a different problem. We are looking at a problem where we are given an expression of this form where each uh, entity is, form, is of the form xi or xj and the whole expression is and of all of them. You understand what an or and what an and is, right? Okay. So you have to decide if I can allocate some value to xi for all the i's so that this expression is true. This is a two side problem. How do we solve it? We make an implication graph. Do you understand what this term is in Boolean algebra? A implies B. If A then B. Right. So when is this expression false? If we have, let's say uh, we are considering every entity in this expression. Let's say we are cons uh, considering one of the entities which is Xi or Xj. Right. So if this expression has to be true and let's say Xi was 0 then that implies that xj has to be true. You understand that? Which means xi complement implies xj and xj complement <coughs> implies xi. Suppose you have xi or xj. If xi is false then xj has to be true. Right? So I make a relation xi complement implies xj which means if xi is false then this becomes true then this cannot be false anymore. Right? Similarly if xj is false then xi has to be true. So I make an implication statement xj complement implies xi. Okay, so we get two uh, implication statements for every entity. This way we'll end up with two n implication relations, right? So now make a graph where you have two n vertices. Oh, sorry, uh, if the number of variables was k, then you have two k vertices. One corresponding to xi, and one corresponding to xi complement. Okay. If there exists an implication from, let's say there exists an implication from xi complement to X, xj, then draw a directed edge from the corresponding vertices. So the uh, directed edge from the vertex corresponding to xi complement to the vertex corresponding to xj. This way you will end up with a graph. Does you understand? Now you just need to check that if you find the strongly connected component of this graph whether or not for any i xi and xi complement lie in the same component. If they do then this would mean that so basically uh, okay before I move on to that do you guys understand if a implies b and b implies c then a implies c these are, these are basic postulates of uh, Boolean algebra, so I am not covering them, but you guys understand this right? If A implies B and B implies C, then th that means A implies C. So similarly, if you make up a graph for this, if there is a path from U to some vertex V, then that would mean that U implies V. Now, if Xi and Xi complement, they both are in the same strongly component, that would mean that there will be a path from xi to xi complement which means xi implies xi complement and there would also be a path from xi complement to xi which would mean xi complement implies xi. These both statements cannot be true at the same time because one of them is 0 one of them is 1. So since both these statements cannot be true at the same time no solution would be possible. So what you have to do when you are when solving a 2 set, I will just summarize. You construct a, an implication graph out of 2n relations generated. You just find out the strongly connected components 
you check for every variable xi what is the component number of xi what is the component number of xi complement if they both are same then there is no solution possible if for any i both components are same there is no solution possible if for every i they lie in different components then there is a solution possible yeah Uh, because this is a directed graph. But so xi implies xi not like, uh, that is a paradox. So uh, xi implies xi dash. Okay. So that is only false. No, that could not be false because let's say I say xi implies xi bar. Okay. This expression is true when this is zero and this is one. Okay. So if I put xi is equal to zero, then this expression still remains true. You understand that? So if there is a path, that does not necessarily mean that it's a contradiction. Yeah. A impl implies B is false when A is true and B is false. Right? For all the other cases, this expression is true. So if you are saying that xi implies xi bar is always false, I have given you a case when it is not. I say put xi equal to 0. Then this, this would become 0 implies 1 which is true. It is very useful to know how to solve a two sat problem because uh, quite frequently you will find problems which will reduce to two sat. So you actually don't have to worry about how to solve a two sat. In, instead you could worry about just reducing the problem to two sides. Like even for this problem we solve it in two steps. First we reduce it to two sides and then we solve the two sides.